All right, so I decided that it is high time that we do something that no one else has done. Now, as, let's see, where's our tweezers here? Okay. So remember we fixed this gear. Fixed two of them. These little guys. Okay, we, we used baking soda and super glue, fixed them, and we ran them and tested them, and they're, they're good to go. Uh, and then the one broke twice. Fixed again. Still good. <clears throat> but that doesn't solve the problem. The problem is, not everybody's got access. If it totally failed, we'd have to go salvage one out of another, out of another piece of equipment. We don't want to do that. And like I've said before, these gears are not special. So I'm going to show you what I got here. You see this? This is a tray full of gears from various... You can, these are the kinds of gears they use in drones and robots and RC cars and, and all that kind of stuff. I've always said, I just told you guys, that these gears are not special. They're common. Now we got to prove it. So. Digging through the box, I knew that I was looking for an eight tooth gear. And so in the box, I got lots of them. They're really small. You've got an extremely small shaft. Let's find another one quick here. Without opening a bag, Let's see if I can find it. Uh, we do have some. We need an eight tooth, and we need one that's like eighteen teeth. Okay, so the one that's an eighteen teeth, I think it's it, it has the right shaft size for what we're looking for. Uh, I think. What does that thing look like anyways? Ah. Okay, this is the 18 right here. And then we need one of those little suckers with the tiny hole in it. Ah, uh -huh, here is the eight. Now if I match those up, basically we got one gear stacked on top of the other. If you can see what I did right there. That's what we got. One gear stacked on top of the other. Oh. Okay. One gear stacked on top of the other. Problem is, it's got to be thin like this one. So, and the other thing is, this one here, wrong shaft size. There's no way that's going to fit on the shaft. And so the deal is, we need to basically trim this one. It's got to be about a third of what it is. And this one, we need to slice a little sliver off. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, what do we do about the hole? Now, I have a mini lathe. What you do is you put the gear in the lathe. You put a drill bit in the where the live center usually is, you push the drill bit into this while it's spinning and you get a perfect hole, centered and everything. If you try to do it a different way, chances are it's going to turn out not centered, which I did an experiment on just to see if this was going to work and I got a piece of gear here and it told me that would work but my hole is not centered because I used a twist hand drill and it just wasn't accurate enough to center it. So, I put my hole in, put it in this little vise here, and I took the X-Acto razor saw, this guy with the red handle,
this guy. And I sliced off a little sliver there. And then I put the the bigger one in a bigger vise. I sliced it across the top and I got my slivers. And I ended up with this. Put that right there and then you zoom in on it. And you look at it like this. Okay. There. You see that? You take a look at that. Okay. Pretty sweet. This gear, because it's made these old gears, um, sometimes they're really brittle. But other times they're really gummy. This one's on the gummy side, so it's hard to keep it it um, centered. These newer gears are made of a um, better quality plastic, and we'll see how durable they are. I'm sure they're quite durable because most of them are from drones. This is what we got. Did we get a match? Let's test it. Find Let's try out. our homemade gear in here. It's in the gearbox. You hear that sound? It sounds pretty good, actually. It sounds really good. Being a different material, it's going to naturally have a different sound to it. And what I'm hearing is it doesn't whine as much doesn't have that high pitch tone to it that they usually have. I like it. And it feels very stable in my hand. We gotta do a little filing to get the, um, the small gear now to fit, uh, fit its wheel. To, to mesh with the wheel. Fits on here nice. We gotta get some of that flash off. With this kind of plastic, it's hard to get flash off after you've done any filing. So far, looking pretty good. Check it out. See what I see? I see a brand new set of gears in there. On, on one of the idlers. We have now done the thing people have dreamed about doing, but no one has ever done. So now, here you see it. I use gears, RC gears that you can get at any RC store. I got some on eBay. Got a bag like this. It was like three bucks. But you don't need, most of these are of no use for anything. But there are a couple of them in here. So figure I spent three bucks to make this gear. I could have gone down to the gear store. And if I knew how to ask for the gears that I wanted, I could have got them from the store. By asking, first I would take the old one in and show it to them. Then I would tell them what I was trying to do. I'm trying to get the little gear as a slice off of a tooth gear, it's like counting the teeth, and I'm trying to get the big gear as a slice off of another an 18 tooth that matches. And then I took my little mini lathe, and I the big gear already had the right shaft hole. That's the other thing, shafts only come in a couple different sizes. They're standard. I took the, the little one, I put it in the mini lathe. And I drilled out a hole to fit the shaft. Question is, I don't know what drill bit I used. I physically matched it up. It is not as big as a 43 in your number 246 tapping. If you're using this set, the big one's too big. The tap is slightly too small, so you need one just a little bit bigger. And I don't know what set I had one in. Dug it out of a box here, but I had one. Look at that. 
sweet that's really nice we have now done we've taken the holy grail of Bachman lifelike repair and here it is as I said there ain't nothing too broke to be fixed you melt down one of these cases I watched another guy do a DVD ROM motor replacement on a steam locomotive he did it on a Tyco but you can do it with these too there is always a way always a way with these things so I love these they don't got all that fancy LEDs and wiring and junk in there added on that you can't even get the shell off these things got room to do some stuff with that's what makes them so great you say, oh, the motor's crap. Well, you know what? This motor right here is 50, 40 years old at least. And guess what? It still runs. It's still looking good. We are ready to move on to the next phase. So far, excellent work.